Good morning. So today's my day off and I want to share with you guys um, some stuff. Um, first, I am entering from one book and notebook into an Excel program of all the clients, the detailing clients I've seen. And so far, I didn't even get to the book yet. I'm still just editing um, the names. So far, we're at 130 people, and I still have a notebook and book to enter, which is mind-blowing. Um, and I just wanted to read off some of the locations of people, where they came from, and why they came to come see me, um, or what caused their matted hair. Also, I know you guys kind of miss me. I've been MIA. I just needed a mental break, y'all. Um, seeing over 200 clients with matted hair, um, it's a lot. Um, and some of the stories you hear and some of the things you experience, sometimes people tend to um, leave an imprint on you. Um, good or bad, it doesn't matter. Just It's a lot. So I had to decompress, reset myself, and reconnect and recharge so I could be a better service to my clients. Okay, so I know I'm still missing the one who went viral on here. She was in the old booking system and the first client I did in my salon, um, I was fasting and she's a friend of mine and she was pregnant and I had no decorations, no nothing in the suite. And I was literally fasting. I was just fasting for asking God uh, for direction for my business, direction for my life. Um, I'm leaving another salon as an, a hairstylist, went from assistant to a hairstylist to now doing my own thing and I just needed direction. So fasting was my go-to answer. So she was one of the first people I did in that salon and her hair happened to be matted and she always reminds me that, but I forget. And now like I, it, it, it triggered something in me. So she was my first client. So based on her reason, it's because she was pregnant before. I think she had complications and then she got pregnant again and she was in a car accident. Um, so she really couldn't move her arms. Her hair got really matted. And it took me a couple of hours just to detangle her hair, just to do a sewing. Um, it seemed like this is going to be a part two. So forgive me. I'm still working on this. I'm still learning. So come back for part two. So no shade to anyone else, but I don't like waiting for like part twos and threes and fours. I want it to be done. So I'm going to try my best to just knock these all out in this robe with this mug and the scarf. So, okay. So then that was the first one. The second one is um, I was working as a hairstylist in a salon. And if I can remember the background of these people, I'll tell you the stories. If I can't, then I'll just say what they're here for, what they, what they came for, and that's it. So the first one, um, she was from South Africa. She was Caucasian. We're going to just say white. And I got time to say black American, black, white, Asian. I'm just going to say what it is. And I got time for all that. So she was a white girl from South Africa, and she worked on a boat. And... Um, she had some extensions in and they did two type of form or two type of methods. And those two methods are not really compatible. So it caused the hair to be matted and also by her working on the boat, she didn't have enough time to go um, or she didn't have the time to go and get it taken out. So it created this ball. And at the time my employer were doing was doing Groupons, which as a hairstylist, um, I have the experience, but I'll never do that again. It, because it's just, for me, it wasn't, you know, as a hairstyle, it wasn't worth it. So she came in for some highlights. We had a deal on highlights because, you know, I can do some. Listen, one thing about me, I can do all hair types. So she came in for some highlights. I'm doing a consultation. And thank God, um, when I did talk to her, she told me she had a situation and she needed help. And before I gave her an answer, all I heard was like, Holy Spirit, like, look at her hair and I opened her hair and I saw this big matted ball. I'm like, whoa. At that time, I didn't even know how to charge her. I didn't know what to do. I tried to go look it up. I'm like, yo, 
it's like, what's next? So I thought I'll try to do it. Um, can I record it? Because I've never seen anything like this. My employer is telling me, like, just tell her to cut it off. We don't do that here. I'm like, don't worry, I'll try my best. But I feel like I can do it. I don't know why I feel like I can do it. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So then for like five, six hours of detangling, boom, it's done. I did her highlights. I did everything. And her hair was like night and day. And that was like mind blowing. So I post that video on YouTube a month later. By this point, I'm moving to my new salon. My friend comes as I'm fasting and I do her hair. And then I'm going through some life changes and then... This girl finds me from Atlanta and let me know that her hair is matted. She's the one who went viral. She's going to be in the part three. Part three. Um, I wanted to provide pictures, but I realized that's just too much work. And I'm not really, I'm not willing to commit to that right now in my life. I can't dig through all that. So sorry, but not sorry. Boundaries. So anyway, so the third one, she went viral. Um, she found me from that video and she kept emailing me but she kept email emailing me from this like spammy email address so i would never reply back or look at it because i'm like oh god here i do not want to buy another um like waist shaper i don't know what this is i don't want flowers i don't know so i never respond so then she called me she's like listen i got a situation going on and i need help i'm willing to fly to miami to get my hair done i'm like you want to fly to Miami? I'm like, okay. You know, so here's me. Let's go ahead and be on. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to see what's going on. So she comes to my salon suite and um, she sits down, her hair's wrapped, and she's telling me her story. And the story is story. You understand? Like, she used to be a model and um, she was like the it girl. Imagine being like dark, the, the Kardashian of your your circle. Like, you, you her. And they just disappear because, because life just comes and upcuts you. So I'm like, okay, so let's see. So she tells me her story. It's really sad. And I'm listening to her. And then I was getting ready to say something. But then I said it. And nothing bad. But I jumped, you know, to trying to be Captain Save Everybody. That I'm like, hold up. Let me see your hair first before I say anything. When she unwrapped her hair, I'm like, whoa, okay. Now, I didn't say whoa, but in my mom like, whoa, okay. I see what's going on because I've never seen anything like that or experienced. But in my mom, like, this is going to be a fun challenge. So I told her, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know I can do it. I'm going to save your hair. Give me... Um, three days. Now, I don't know why I said three days. Um, I don't know how three days came to me. It probably should have been four days. Now I'm able, I'm better able or I'm able now to guesstimate how long it'll guesstimate. I know guesstimate is not a word, but you know, give an estimate on how long it'll take me to detangle someone's hair. But back then I was still learning. I'm like, yo, and it took me three days and 33 hours. I couldn't have no one else in the suite with her. So my assistant had to leave and I had to do it by myself. 10, 12 hour days, detangling her hair. Oh, it's going to be a part. Whatever's next after this part. Let's, let's come back. Okay, part four. So now I'm detangling this client's hair. She's telling me the tea. I mean, so much information. And something happens. Someone knocks on the door. So I go to the door. And because remember, it's just me and her. It's just like day two at this point. My client, I mean, my assistant's not there. She never really got to meet her because she, the, the, the client wanted nobody to be in there because she went in privacy and she was embarrassed. So I get some knocks on the door. I go to the door and I open like this. I say, yeah, hi. She said, I'm here for her so I said her so I look back at the client she looking at me I'm looking at her but she looking at me as if she's confused so I'm confused on why she looks confused because she says she's here for you and not me 
So why are you looking confused? So then I look like her. I'm like, you here for her? She said, yeah. I said, um, by the looks of it, I don't think she knows you. Like she does know me. I said, I came all the way from such and such to find her. Her mom said she was in Miami and I took a flight and I came to Miami to find her because we haven't seen her in like two years and we all been looking for her. We're all worried about her. We haven't like she doesn't answer the phones, text. So I'm like, oh crap. She know her, know her. So she looking surprised and shook and confused because she trying to figure out how the girl found her here and she's speechless and I'm over here trying to figure out does she even know her, but she does know her. She's one of her friends that she disappeared on when she was going through all these things, you understand? So now I'm shook. I said, well, okay. Um, well, we're doing her hair right now. Um, when she's available, I think she'll reach, she'll reach out to you, right? Because I'm looking at her face like she's looking like uncomfortable. How did she find me? So she asked her, how did you find me? She said, oh, well, you're, I called your mom. I stopped by your mom's house to, see, to say hi to her. I guess they're like childhood friends, whatever. And the mom happened to tell her, oh, you know, such and such is in town. Like, oh, where is she? Her nephew took her to the space um, or a space or place to get her hair done. And so she asked the nephew, where did he take her? This girl drove to the place, parked in the street, blocking traffic, ran inside like the FBI and found a girl. I don't know how she found my suite, but she found my suite. I said, girl, you in the wrong profession. You need to work for the feds because the way you found her and tracked down, you should not be a flight attendant. You should be FBI.